Welcome to Life Devotions and thank you for joining me. I'm talking to you today about priestly service is the title of this devotion. And I want to take you to one of the scriptures that I feel so powerful, especially for today, but for every generation where the Lord is looking for those who would offer their lives in His service. You see, there comes a time in each one of our lives, and I believe that comes around at certain seasons when it's like the Spirit again begins to call and draw upon us whom we will serve. Joshua said, me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Jesus was called the servant. He, he says, I am he who is among you who serves. And if I, your master, have washed your feet in serving you, so ought you too. You see, servanthood to the Lord, I would say, is one of the greatest privileges in this life. Sometimes people can look at ministers, and this is a familiar trend at different seasons in life, where people can look at ministers and think they are lesser, they're not as as important to society, they're not as, uh, they don't work for their money or something like that. Or, you know, people can have silly ideas to think that their company or their business is more important. I personally do not believe that there needs to be a competition of importance between any service in life. I don't think that a fireman is less important than a policeman or a nurse or a doctor, a consultant. I mean, you know, yes, that fireman may sit in his fire station while the consultant is doing a surgery, and at that moment, that consultant, that doctor, is, is highly important to the uh, success and welfare of the individual. But put your house on fire, and that fireman can save your family by getting you out in time or saving your house from being burned down. Uh, or your car or anything else. I mean, I believe there's no competition. I think every role in life is as important or valuable in its own place that God has given it. But I want to encourage you today when that breath of God's Spirit comes over your heart calling you into His service, answer the Lord and say, here I am. We see in Moses, the Lord said, Moses, Moses, and He said, here I am. And the Lord said to him, Moses, you're standing on holy ground. Take the shoes off your feet. In other words, don't go your own way. And Moses could have just kind of said, well, I'm busy right now. The sheep are there and, and my wife's got dinner on the table. Uh, sorry, I gotta go. That's how many people act when it comes to the house of God or when it comes to prayer or Bible reading. But Moses didn't do it. He took his shoes off. And then God was able to employ him to bring about such phenomenal deliverance for his people that he had promised to give them. I believe today God is looking for those who will serve him. And so we're talking about the grace of priestly service, okay? And I will take you here to, let me just read it from the Amplified. I'm just gonna do that it, because of time, otherwise my time goes away. Listen, it says in the second part of verse 15, because of the grace and merited favor bestowed on me by God in making me a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles, I act in the priestly service of the gospel, the good news of God, in order that the sacrificial offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable to God, consecrated and made holy by the Holy Spirit. I mean, that verse right there is so powerful. He says that their lives and service to God will be pleasing to Him by the Holy Spirit. I labor in priestly ministry by God's grace, so sharing the good news, the gospel, so that these people's love for God and their worship to Him are made pleasing to Him by the Holy Spirit. My goodness, what an important, what an important thing. You might say, okay, give me a practical example, Pastor, because that's a little bit, yeah, I'm trying to grasp it. Okay, I was in a meeting many years ago, somewhere in this country in Britain, and, <clears throat> and it was dark in that meeting. Dark, not just naturally, but spiritually. And it's like people were discontent, didn't really want to be there, uh, 
etc. Nothing was happening. The gentleman who was leading a few songs, he, his whole neck became red because the pressure of the atmosphere was so oppressing and hard for him and the people just didn't join in with him. And I felt the Spirit of Christ rise up in me with priestly intercession. And the moment I got up, His Holy Spirit poured out over those people and they began to worship Him and it's like the whole atmosphere changed and it became light by the power and the life of the love of Jesus Christ. And people began to sing and praise and joy and smiles came. See, their worship, their life to God became well pleasing to Him by the Holy Spirit. Their sacrifice, their, sacri their life of sacrifice became well pleasing to Him by the Holy Spirit. Do you see what I'm trying to show you? He says, now in Christ Jesus, then, I have legitimate reason to glory, exalt in my work for God, in what through Christ Jesus I have accomplished concerning the things of God. For, of course, I will not venture, presume to speak thus of any work, except what Christ has actually done through me as an instrument in his hands to win obedience from the Gentiles by word and deed, even as my preaching has been accompanied with the power of signs and wonders, and all of it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, signs and wonders, folks. In other words, that God does things for people that they, they know undoubtedly that was the Lord. What he just said, that was God. What just happened, that was God. You see, they begin to experience what the Bible calls signs and wonders. May not be a sign to somebody else, may not be a wonder to somebody else, but it is to that person. And I've experienced this many times in my life. I mean, you know, I was in Slovenia and this one lady said, could you pray for me because I, uh, I, I'm supposed to have two more children. I said, okay. So I closed my eyes. In the moment I closed my eyes to pray for her, the Holy Spirit gave me an, 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 a knowing, a, a, a picture, so to speak. Uh, but it was a knowing, not something I could visibly see. And I said, I see two tubes and they're tied in a knot. And I see the Lord untie the knots and the power of the Holy Spirit, bump came upon that person. And that person fell on the floor, which I don't usually experience when I pray for people. Not that I'm against it, but it's not something I necessarily look for for people that have to fall. But she fell on the floor and she was worshiping and singing. <clears throat> and I said to her later, I said, could you share with me what was that, what was the sign of wonder for you? She said, I had the doctor tie my tubes and when the Lord kept impressing on me that I'm to get pregnant again, I said, I'll do it if you want tie my tubes. And you see, that was a sign of wonder for her. May not have been for anybody else. And you see, God is wanting to do things that are undoubtedly clear to people. And I want to bring you in closing today in a few scriptures here to this, what Paul was saying here in verse 15, the last part, because of the grace unmerited favor bestowed on me by God in making me a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, all of us, the Bible says, have been given grace. All of us. By grace, through faith, I've been saved. I've been saved by grace through faith. It says in Ephesians 2 verse 8, I think, you see, we all are what we are by the grace of God. And the Apostle Paul says in Galatians 2, verse 21, <clears throat> verse 21, Therefore, and he's talking about it's no longer I that live it in verse 20, but Christ lives in me. Therefore, I do not treat God's gracious gift as something of minor importance and defeat its very purpose. I do not set aside, invalidate, and frustrate to nullify the grace, unmerited favor of God. You see, the grace of God that made Paul a minister of Jesus so that he could help other people begin to live in a life well-pleasing to God by the Holy Spirit, he says, I don't nullify it, set it aside, or treat it as important. I do not neglect. The Bible talks about neglecting. I do not neglect this grace. In 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10, he says, I am 
what I am but the grace of God. And I have not received this grace in vain, but labor more abundantly than all, yet not I, but the grace that's with me. You know, sometimes, folks, we have phenomenal grace, but we don't do anything with it. It's, I believe this, listen, I believe that when you get married with somebody and God joins that couple, you're not just joining it in the pleasure of self-indulgence. There are so many people today that are Christians but don't believe in waiting until God's joined them in holy matrimony before they sleep together. I believe in that with all my heart. Oh yeah, I also know that we can make mistakes and we can sin, but I'm not talking about making mistakes. I'm talking about what we believe. I believe you wait in sleeping together until God's joined you together in holy matrimony. That is God's way. That is God's way throughout the scripture. When a man in the town of Sichem took Dana, the sister of Simeon and Levi, and laid with her, that so offended the people of God, Simeon and Levi, that they went in and killed everybody. All the men in that city, they killed because he slept with her without being married to her. He wanted to get married to her afterwards, but they said, you have done something that is evil in our sight. When Joseph later on, being part of that same family, when Joseph later on was being invited to sleep with Potiphar's wife, he said, no, I will not do this. I will not sin against God. We're talking about things that today people think is okay. Folks, just because it's culturally okay doesn't mean it's holy and right in God's sight. And here, it's so important that I believe that when God joins people together in marriage, He gives grace to that couple for each other. It comes along with the covenant anointing. He gives grace like we come into the grace of God through our union with Jesus. And through that grace, we're kept in fellowship with our Heavenly Father through Jesus. That grace is particular to our relationship with Christ the body of Christ. And I believe the same in marriage. I have grace for Virginia that I have that nobody else has because that's the covenant part of the anointing of our union. She has grace for me where other women can maybe look at Virginia and go, I don't know why you put up with that guy. And she may say, I don't know either, but it's the grace of God. <laughs> no, we have such a good relationship that I can say this jokingly, but I do believe this is true about people that really suffer in their relationship that you may think, well, don't put up with it, but they can put up with it, why? Because there's a covenant upholding it, strengthening it, fighting for that union, interceding for it to be whole and healed. That's the grace of God. And Paul says, I have this grace. I'm not gonna just act like it's not there in my life. Right? Okay, one more, one more. And then, uh, or maybe two more if I, can, if I can do it. Oh, I love this. this. This really blesses me. Laboring together as God's fellow workers, 2 Corinthians 6 verse 1, with him then we beg you not to receive the grace of God in vain, that merciful kindness by which God exerts his holy influences on souls and turns them to Christ, keeping, strengthening them. Do not receive it to no purpose. You see, is what I said to you a moment ago. Do not receive it. Do not, don't neglect that grace. Don't disregard it. Okay, real quick, two more verses. This is, uh, uh, you know it. Oh, let me just read it anyway. It is just so beautiful how it says it. Hold on. Listen to this. Paul is struggling in his service of the Lord because the devil was trying to fight him tooth and nail on every corner in every way he could, especially in his own, his own psyche, you know. He's constantly harassing him, making him feel mere earthly and human. And, and the, Paul says, Lord, please take this away. I hate these feelings of my weakness. I hate these feelings of my shortcomings. I hate it. Please, Lord. And the Lord says, my grace, my favor and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you 
sufficient against any danger, enabling you to bear the trouble manfully, for my strength and power are made perfect, fully filling, fulfilled and complete, and show themselves more effectively in your weakness. Therefore, I will all the more glory in my weakness, Paul says, in infirmities and so forth, that the strength of Christ may rest upon me. In other words, that the power by which I am a witness and minister in priestly service is not of myself, but it is what Christ is working through me. Okay, let me close with this verse. I, I, I think this verse is so beautiful here. It's Romans 12 verse 1 and 2 from the Passion Translation. What should our proper response be to God's marvelous mercy and grace? I encourage you, surrender yourselves to God to be His sacred living sacrifice and live in holiness experiencing all that delights the Heavenly Father's heart. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but inwardly tra be transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. And this will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in His eyes. Oh, I just love this. But inwardly be transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in His eyes. Friends, what should be our response to such phenomenal grace? Don't hold it back. Many times you don't realize the grace you have been given by God until you extended Virginia last night. She was having fever and really feeling unwell. And, and I was praying and she, she, she asked me, can you come and pray for me? And I went and laid hands on her. And an hour and a half or two hours later, the fever broke. You see, that is, pray, believe you have received, and it comes to pass. And, and the fever broke, and the Lord loosed her from it. And that is the grace. That is the grace. And many times you don't realize the grace until you begin to give it away. And I trust the Lord that you are in priestly service, giving this grace to precious people all around you every day. Amen. Have a good day.